everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here. Today's video is specifically for folks who want to start learning about AWS, but don't know where to start or how to jump into creating an AWS account. So today I'm gonna to show you in a quick way how to set up an AWS account in a secure manner. So let's take a look at the things that we're gonna be covering here in this video. We're gonna be registering an account. In order to do that, you need to have a valid email address and a credit card that we can have on file. We're also gonna be enabling IAM access so that different accounts that we end up creating can actually access the billing functions within AWS. This is gonna be important for the last thing that we're gonna be doing, which is setting up a budget and billing alarm. I know that when I mentioned that you're gonna to need to have a credit card, you probably made you squirm a little bit, but don't worry. We're gonna be setting up an alert with uh, a certain threshold set so that we know that whenever we're coming up against that dollar value, we'll actually end up getting some email alerts so we can go in and make sure that we aren't actually being billed more than what we're expecting. The other thing that we're gonna make sure that we cover is enabling multi-factor authentication for the root account. Once we get all these things done, you should be good to go. Uh, and we're gonna try and do this in about five minutes. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. If you have any questions or comments, throw those down in the comment section below and we'll hit those up. Okay, so off the bat, we're gonna need to put in a valid email address. Well, we're gonna use cyberinsightlab at gmail.com. This is just something that I just threw together just for different lab videos that I'm doing. And the account name actually has to be unique all the way across AWS. So pick something uh, that makes sense to you, but don't be surprised if you end up running into uh, a naming issue since somebody else is already using that. So let's just go Cyber Insight YouTube. Okay. Okay, so I sent an email over here. Let's go see if that came in. Email verification, we're gonna need this code. So now that we're verified, we will have to set up a password for the root user. Now, for those who are unfamiliar, whenever you create an AWS account, and think of it, uh, an account kind of as a container that holds all of the different uh, AWS services uh, that you're gonna be configuring and using, there's a root user account that's associated with that. And so we need to provide a, a password for that, something that is a strong password, although we are gonna end up enabling multi-factor authentication uh, as well once we continue this step. And you can see the requirements here, you need to have at least eight characters long and have at least three of the following. If you're using a password manager, they can automatically generate a password, which would be a good thing to do. You definitely do wanna be using a password manager just as best practice. And because of the fact that we are gonna be enabling multi-factor authentication, uh, scanning the QR code for the MFA will make things be a lot easier as well. All right, so now that we have that, then we're gonna choose personal. You can put in whatever type of contact information that you want within here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill this out, but we're gonna skip ahead. And here we're gonna be putting in some billing information. After we put in the billing information, then it's going to want us to confirm our identity. And you can have this go uh, to a cell phone number. I'm gonna fill this out and then uh, we'll get this information back. All right, so I got my code in. We're just gonna put this in. Now, as I mentioned, we're going for the free plan here. We're not gonna need any type of support or anything like that. There are some limitations as far as responsiveness, but for anything that you're doing where you're just talking about a lab environment, basic support free is perfect. All right. We are good here, and now we can go to the management console. Okay, so then when we go to sign in, it's gonna give us a few different options as root user or IAM user. Since we haven't configured an IAM user yet, which is best practice, and we can do that in a later video, we're gonna be signing in with a root user, so we just need to put in the email address that we use to create the account. And then we need the password. And there we go, we are now in the AWS console. So if we go back, we look at what we were gonna do in here. We're gonna enable IAM access to billing next, enable MFA, and then set up budgets and billing alarms. So we're gonna go underneath the top here. We have our account information here. This ID here uh, is important. This is the account ID for your AWS account. You also see that we are in uh, US East One, Northern Virginia. This is all good things to understand, especially when you're dealing with billing stuff. You wanna make sure 
that you are in uh, Northern Virginia, US East one when dealing with that stuff. So we're gonna go under account settings, went to and clicked on account. Here you can put in contact information if you wanna do that. We don't necessarily need to do that at the moment. We see all the different regions that we're in. What we're doing within here is we are going to turn on the IM user and role-based access to billing information. This should be one of the first things that you do. So we go ahead and hit that, and now that is updated. The next thing that we're going to do is turn on the MFA. So under security credentials, we can go multi-factor authentication. See here, we can activate MFA. We're gonna click that. We're gonna use a virtual MFA device. So this is using an authenticator app. If you had a hardware token, um, you could use the hardware MFA or if you're using some type of YubiKey or something like that, you also have that as an option. We're gonna go virtual MFA. I have a list of different stuff uh, as far as different types of applications that can support that. And then here you're gonna click this and it's gonna show the QR code. Obviously I'm not gonna show that on the video. So you're gonna click this to show the QR code and then use your MFA app to capture that. Then it's gonna require you to put in two different MFA codes. So you're gonna put in the first one then you wait whatever the time period is, 30 seconds or 60 seconds and put in the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then we will move on to the next step. So once you've done that, then you'll successfully see that you have assigned a virtual MFA. Should be able to sign out of this. We're gonna log back in and make sure that MFA is working. Remember we're doing root user, so we're gonna put in that particular email address. We have to do the security check, password, and then requires us to add in the MFA code. All right, so there we go. So up to this point, we've registered the account, enabled IAM access to billing, which is gonna be required for our next step, and we've enabled MFA uh, for security reasons on the account. Last thing we're gonna do is set up a budget and billing alarm, so that way, uh, yeah, we don't get billed a whole bunch of money. Again, like I said, we're using the free tier, so hopefully you shouldn't really be running into this, but if you do end up turning on some stuff, it is good to have an automated alarm set up to help you out with that. So we go to the billing dashboard. We're gonna go ahead and select these, receive PDF invoice by email, receive free tier usage alert, put in the email address that you want there. And receive billing alert. We can save those preferences. So we can go ahead and we're gonna click on budgets. And we're gonna create a budget. And so budget creation limited, because Cost Explorer is not enabled for this account, you have to go ahead and hit that, enable Cost Explorer. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for that to actually get up and running, but that's okay. We needed to turn it on. We can go back and actually set up the billing alarm now. So we're gonna go cost budget recommended. We can name this whatever we wanna do, Cyber Insight Lab Cost Alert. You can set this by whatever periods you want to do. Monthly is when they're normally billed, so you can do that. This would be a reoccurring budget, so you're doing this monthly. You're setting a, a, a budget limit. And then you can do different budgeting methods. We're going to go fixed. So you can make this be whatever you want the value to be. If you want it to be $10, $20, whatever. Um, so let's just go $10. And then we're gonna go all AWS services and go next. And then we're gonna add an alert threshold. So if we wanna be aware of whatever this is, before we get to that point, we could set this, let's say we wanna know once it hits 75%. So once we actually spend $7.50 within the month, we're gonna end up getting an alert. And we can go ahead. We don't need to do anything else there. That should be good to go. And next, and let's make sure cost budget, monthly, $10 budget with an alert of once we hit 75%. And there we go. There is our budget alarm right there. Also worth maybe checking out uh, the different free tier services that you have configured once you actually do that. Easy way to track to see once you're coming up against some of those uh, threshold limits. So yeah, so that is it. Setting up a AWS account. We got the root account set up. We got MFA set up on that. We enabled IAM access to be able to get into the billing and do some configurations there, which involved 
setting up the budget and billing alarm, and then also some of the default reporting uh, configurations that we ended up setting up as well. So that's it. That's the basics of getting an AWS account set up in a secure manner. There's some other best practices that we do as we continue to walk through this. Maybe some of the other stuff that we can do in a future video is setting up an IAM user because really we should be using an account that's set up within IAM, their identity access management solution, versus using the root account. Uh, we also could look at doing some other types of configurations as far as setting up multiple accounts and tying them together under organizations. So leave me some questions, comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that other good stuff. I appreciate you dropping in and we will chat soon. All right, bye.